Thank you for watching Dying of Exposure. My name is Steve. And I'm Greg. And we're watching through Star Trek Picard. Now this is a series that isn't like a watch react thing. We're not just going to throw ourselves in a little corner box and then have the episode up or throw the episode in the corner box and have a sweet green screen uh, of us reacting to it. That That's not what you want to watch. A watch. We're going to be watching through episode to episode, pausing it during episodes and telling you what we thought. And rather than have you try and keep up with that, I'm just going to super edit it in YouTube. So we live in the future and you shouldn't have to put up with what we have to put up with. Uh, but Star Trek Picard, how'd you like the first episode of Star Trek Picard, Greg? I really enjoyed it. It had a lot to say. Most importantly, it made me hard for Picard. God damn it, <laughs> Greg. We have discussed this. It's just called Segment Dying in. of Exposure Watches Star Trek Picard. That's what the series is called. Hard for Picard. It's not hard for Picard. Um. Anyway. I'm hard for Picard. Greg, did you forget your glasses again? <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's fine. It's all right. It's not Our important. glasses look very similar. I don't want people to confuse us on camera. I know. Now, how would you tell us apart? Now, otherwise, we look exactly the same. Uh, so this is episode two. Uh, it's called Maps and Something. It'll be in the YouTube <laughs> description and title. Don't worry. Um, uh, and uh, let's get into it. All right. Okay. So literally your very first significant question which is uh, uh, what, what's up with this big jump to synthetics gets at least framed better in the second episode right out the gate. And it's like, what are these synthetics? Oh, here's, 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 here's what they were. They were not data. They were not lore. They were like a significant downgrade from the androids we're used to see. Yeah, fully half of our questions from episode one answered in the first two minutes that is how you do a weekly yeah like real. that's that's honestly i gotta give them credit when you do those like like kind of broad mysteries and then it's like we'll get to it but it's weekly so you're not really a hundred percent sure um and they're questions that the show is leading you to mandalorian is a little different i think because it's not so much that it was leading you to a bunch of questions so much as it was choosing to only give you what it gave you and your mind just sort of wandered to questions like who's this Mandalorian? And what's he what's his deal? And wh why is there a baby Yoda? This one is like, we're gonna talk about things and we're not gonna explain them at all. And then immediately we're going to explain some of them. It, it's it's confidence building. I look forward to uh, the majority of our critiques and speculations being completely wrong from week to week. Mm. This is we're going to look really good in this series. So this is a reboot of the movie Babes in Toyland, which you can watch on Disney <laughs> Plus. Um, uh, no, but uh, yeah, I just I just love the we were like, what is go what what's going on? Like they jumped right into synthetics. Oh, here's here's here. The, this is what they were, and it's pretty clear. I think I think from the fir first moment, um, it's pretty clear that dude gets hacked. Oh, yeah. Like his eye does the weird little shifty thing and then he automatically goes and then he kills himself. Not out of probably regret, probably out of command. Well, yeah, it can't um, be out of regret. Well, I mean, he might have some limited emotional functionality. It, obviously, most of it was emulation. Um, but that doesn't mean it's not kind of there. But, in a, you know, like how cats can kind of be joyful. Like they can't get they're not ever going to make it to dog. But, you know, they can kind of be happy. <laughs> So the the tacta nerd in me, tactical nerd, tacta, yeah. whatever, mall ninja in me p wants to point out that it's not coincidental. It's interesting that all of his shots were in the upper thoracic yeah. cavities. They were all instant kills. And he takes out presumably his neural processing network yeah. is in his brain. So whatever's going on, speculation is that they want to make sure there is absolutely no witnesses to it, mm -hmm. including stuff that can be pulled off of hard drives. Yeah, right. So, uh, yeah, it's it's just it's good intro. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, good, it's, it's, it's strong. If I wasn't hooked by episode one, I'm totally yeah. in now. I am a hard card. God, you know I'm just going to cut each time you Don't say care. that. Don't care. I am to. a... Great friend of Steve. I'm just going to overdub what you say. 
All right, so that was a real pregnant exposition-y. There's a lot of not. Like, they kept cutting back to the investigation, which should have punched up more, but I don't think it was different enough. It was edited really well in the way that, like, the conversation sort of naturally transitioned between each other. But that scene was, like, a solid, like, seven minutes. Yeah, and... Uh, Eight minutes, maybe. It's weird to have a a servant, for lack of a better word, mm -hmm. um, suddenly break out the I'm actually Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. Um, uh, so they mentioned that she was recruited um, in the conversation just prior to something. Right. And if she's Romulan, she's probably much like Garrick from DS9 or, or just Cardassians in DS9. Like all of them are dubious and capable. Um, and, and so my guess is Romulans aren't that different in that manner. But maybe she, maybe she was like, I, I'm hoping that she was, you know, some sort of like um, analyst. Like, a, like, like something like that, like securities analyst. Because then that would make most of what happened there. It's Explain just a huge it. sin of convenience is all. It's 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 a massive sin of convenience. Uh, now, hopefully what we're going to find out in future episodes is that those two, like there's a very specific reason why they're with Picard, um, why she only addresses him by rank, uh, not not something to be ignored. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, right now, it's, it's yet more questions. Uh, yeah. Yeah. More questions about what the fuck. But uh, let's get back to this four cube. Okay, so okay. let's talk about what's killing Picard. Do we... We know of two things that, that fuck with his brain. The probe in inner light mm -hmm. and the Borg. Uh, I think it's the Borg. Thing. I assume, given the the larger backdrop. Yeah. Um, I think it's the Borg thing. And it's something that I do think they're not... He's not wrong. I think they mentioned when he was all better that there were some remnant traces that may... And then we see him, it, like, you think it was settled kind of in first contact, but, like, nothing happens to remove whatever they did to him. Right. Uh, it's just he has, uh, like, a like an emotional victory. I've always wondered, and I'm sure there's an answer to this somewhere deep in the extended universe. Um, so when they first pull him out of the Borg, he has uh, facial remnants, uh, machinery on him, very uh, exactly like seven of nine does yeah uh but then he loses his and i don't know what makes his removable ultimately and hers not so i'm curious if that's part of. i it. feel like she took her kept hers by choice um my guess is is that and i don't i don't know voyager as much by the bat like the back of my hand but if i were making an estimated guess so seven of nine holds on to her borg identity a lot longer obviously than picard but more importantly, um, uh, in Voyager, they're on a 15-deck ship. They just simply might not have been able to untangle it because they might not have had the facilities that, say, the Enterprise in the Alpha Quadrant do. So one might hope, but I agree with you. I'm 100% sure there is an explanation for it. There's no question in my mind that they're like, oh, yeah, and Picard's versions. So what Picard had was defensive face plating around ocular implants versus seven of nines are actually drilling from the front of the implant into brain with, you know, though it's probably some bullshit Star Trek planning. But I, so they give You went so hard on that and then pulled yourself back from the edge. Yes. <laughs> uh, the, um, I don't know how I feel about them doing a Picard might die you know, this might be the last mission. Number one, we know there's a season two. So that's not it. Number two, it if they had delivered that news at the beginning of the series, like in, in the very first scene, I think it would have made some of his behavior a bit more reasonable. So it's like, he's like, oh, you're crazy. And it's like, well, I'm going to fucking die. I'm just, I, there, I might die. So I'm just going to get involved with whatever I can get involved with to claim a life, um, to claim living again. If there is a complaint I have about the show so far, 
it's Picard's motivations are all terribly rigged. Mm. Um, we we don't. I mean, they are not explaining anything to us. He doesn't need a lot of motivation. He's literally he believes that this person is in trouble and that it might be related to his dead thing. That's enough. And then as the mystery unpacks itself, he's gonna keep chasing that down. Like like you don't need to come up with like that much for him to to do it. They dredge up the past. They have the conversation with the interview. They have the conversation. A girl comes that sort of reminds him there. I agree that it doesn't seem to be enough for him to care about the girl. But if you just put it, if, if they'd front loaded it as like, this could be some sort of evil Romulan conspiracy. I, I feel like we're in the like mediocre adventure yeah. for D&D level of, yes. of motivation. Here's a quest. Won't you please go on it, even though your actual involvement in that quest, not well established. Yeah. I may, maybe more comes out. Maybe she could have, he, they could have solved it if only by having him maybe at the beginning of this episode threatened or attacked on his own. So it's either up. So like, you know how um, she tells him that she knows him. She can see him. Right. She's told, and then when she finds him again, she knew she had to come back to him, right? But like, other than that, um, I don't like if 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 again at the beginning of episode two, rather than a seven to eight minute <laughs> investigation, they have a situation where he's like out somewhere, and a couple of those suits come in, and they get dealt with by some other thing. He's not going to hand to hand them. But now he realizes it's like well. You can wait around to die, or you can start looking into this. And then that gives him more of a, uh, I don't really have enough motivation to run with this, but I don't really have a choice. Yeah, it's the, so. Danger chasing him instead of him chasing danger. You know, The Witcher, for the first several episodes, has a a, a really deep, why the hell does he care what's what's happening? Yeah. Um, and But they're able to tie it in by the end in a really it's, solid way it it would be nice if picard manages to pull something like that off i feel like um he uh, well they certainly haven't told us why he is willing to rejoin starfleet hop across the galaxy um presumably endanger his uh his romulan friends I, like there's there's just uh, there's just so much going on. There's so much they haven't told. So hopefully there'll be like the synthetics and they'll unpack those in a good and fair enough orderly manner so yeah. they they can keep telling us mysteries and answering mysteries episode to episode. Because as long as they answer and they can bring up a bunch if they keep answering a bunch of them too. That's a fine method of storytelling. It's not super common anymore. Usually there's one big arc and the whole season is about unpacking that one bigger question but i could understand if they did this as a sort of replacement for how they do episodic television where they're like we're just basically going to give you a piece of what this is all really about each episode and uh and so it'll feel like each episode has a significant part of it um hopefully it would not hurt my feelings if you have to watch the the season twice to get all of the nuance. Oh yeah, I would uh, but be we'll, fine with we'll, that. we'll find out one way or another. Visitors must report to main security desk. All visitors must report to main. So in the limited amount of time, there's been a discussion about the fact that the Enterprise, the original Enterprise that they show up there is the discovery version of the original Enterprise, not the Enterprise from the, like not just like the, the HD Enterprise from like the DVDs that they they did where it's like it's still the original model they just sort of touch it up a little bit with some digital they they, they showed the discovery version of the Enterprise which they were grumpy about because they're like like they're like well you know this is just another example of breaking that thing and then someone has to argue it's like well discovery is supposed to be in the prime universe so that would be the enterprise in the same universe that picard is in even if and they just refuse to accept that like aesthetic updates it's why the ship in next gen didn't look like the original enterprise ship it's why the the the, the 
the show Enterprise doesn't look like it's honestly before a lot of the other Star Trek. It looks more like a like an actual naval ship or or an actual aircraft carrier. It, 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 it things change visually. It's okay. They're they're allowed to. I, so okay. it's weird to me, and I'll, I'll just just for the record, it is weird to me that people really do demand that um, that something in 2020 look like a 1960s model. Yeah, like right. that is a that is uh, it's ridiculous. It's okay. We all know what it's supposed to be. Just like I'm I'm happy they're advancing technology. Because if they were still using even even what they did in Next Gen, which when Next Gen was out, that was some pretty far-reaching stuff, would look downright primitive. I mean, our cell phones are better than the computers in Next Gen. Yeah, we just, just you just got to move on. Just got to move forward. A- except except that mm-hmm. things change for the better. You know, Next Gen actually had an episode in the first season, or when they're sitting around the desk, it had a holographic panel display. And they only used it in one episode, never again. And Super people expensive. Like, people were like, "Why?" And it's like, it's probably cost a buttload. I, <laughs> you know, do you that. want it? Do you want like? And I know, I, I know they they kind of did some of this, but like the original series had had uh, analog timers, like 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 old fashioned alarm clocks clicking away. We we don't need that nope. in a view version of the Star future. Trek. Next Gen came out in 1987. That is pre-Windows 3.1. It's pre-Windows, I think. It's just Apple at that point. I think it's just Apple too, but it might be early Windows. It is prior prior to the general public accessing the internet or even understanding what it could be. Um, still DARPAnet, I think, at that point. Um, yeah. So, yeah. When you come back to it, because like we're talking about it, like oh, it's almost eighteen years later, it's twenty years later, it's 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 as as Greg said, it's like thirty three years after they started making Next Gen, so thirty three years, thirty two, we'll round it a little bit down, thirty two years of like prop development, evolution, and everything, and. As it's just it frustrates me. You do, it doesn't have to be the same. Next Gen wasn't the same as the original series. Even if you only compare the Gene Roddenberry episodes, it was different. Um, uh, uh, DS9 wasn't the same as Next Gen. Voyager wasn't the same as DS9. Enterprise wasn't the same, same as either of them. And Discovery is very different, and so is Picard. And it's better to swing big than copy. And if all you want is the same stuff, the Orville is out there for you, and it's literally exactly I, the same as early '90s. Or just next just gen internet, get over it. I'd like to point out that, like mm. six minutes after us complaining about his motivation, they just completely laid it out. They, I'm gonna stop like, this show. No, I think we should still do this. Yeah, because we can, that's true. We can really drive home the fact that this show is really trying to set up questions and then fucking answer them. It gives you a like. But what about, and then it's like, and it's so satisfying to watch a show that actually does that, that doesn't lost you with compounding after compounding mysteries and then take forever to get to them. It's, it, it's, it, it feels like it's like, like mini boss questioning you. It's giving you micro questions yeah. in, in, in each form and then, and then knocking them out with micro answers. Yeah, so far they're a hundred percent in terms of the quality oh, yeah. of their answers. Yeah, and uh, now yes, now now, <laughs> now wrong. it doesn't even honestly matter why he might have been interested in it to begin with. He gonna fucking find it now. I, they're I, putting I love, walls up in front of him. I love the ignore me at your peril, like that. That was the Jean Luc that I was craving the entire first episode and, in one line. And he's back. And he's back. As guests of the Borg Artifact Research Institute, your safety is important to us. You are standing inside one of the most destructive weapons ever known. Can we talk about the language of your safety is important to us coming off of out of a Romulan mouth in a Borg hollowed out ship? 
I have been the whole time just thinking the board don't work with that many species, yeah. which I think is a really clever way to again show rather than tell how far the the did I say the Borg? The Romulan. Yeah, I meant the Romulan. I'm gonna I'm gonna do that take again. It's really interesting to me how many different species the Romulans are working with in this. Yeah. It's a great way to show rather than simply exposition dump how far their empire has come and uh, honestly it's had to come. Yeah, and like whether or not they're happy about it or they might mistreat them, that's going to be foreseen but or that's not yet foreseen but the fact that they're even putting them in on work is so outside of the xenophobia of romulus and 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 the romulan star empire uh i call it the romulan star empire because that's what it's called and i like to bring it up every time because it's a dumb name it's a dumb super name. dumb name i get it romulan star the star of romulus they're the center of the empire and they want to identify themselves more aggressively for Marines, but it's dumb. Hey, did, um, unrelated, did, did Tasha Yar's Romulan baby die? Is she, could she still be kicking around in this, in this timeline? You know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe that would be, would be a, hell of, be a hell of a cameo. Latest revelation. All right. So now they, they have explained why she looks like the painting. We're halfway through episode two. Um, how many of our uh, like questions that we posed as as problems have they addressed? Like, I feel like it's all of them. Yeah, it's, they really drive home. They're like, okay, at least for now, our working theories are this. You would already come here. We already know Bruce Maddox wanted to get it data, so it makes sense that he get it before. If we know that synthetics are illegal, illegal, that was Bruce Maddox's life, so it makes sense he'd start getting up to some crazy shit. You know, we know that the Romulans were devastated, and so now they're they're not a dead species. There are plenty of Romulans left, but maybe they had to work with more people because they 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 are they're the Romulan star died of the Romulan star empire, which means that that you know that's going to be a massive damage to any kind of thing so they got to work with people um the romulans might be interested in borg technology because it's a leg up plus apparently there's still living borg on that not apparently yeah yeah there's living borg there still living on borg. there that are disconnected from the the main hive uh we've got uh Picard ready to go now with good clear motivation on what he has to do and things reaffirming that his theories are at least viable like this is good uh, i have to say one of the smartest shows we've seen in years honestly the uh, the my uh, the problem i'm having is that i'm 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 so beaten down by the quality of most TV in general and sci-fi in particular. You You're like, oh, that's a plot them. hole. Oh, that's a plot hole. They, they they very clearly have yet to pose a question that they have not already explored internally. We're just impatient, which yeah. you said earlier. Yeah, uh, it's, it, it, it's, it's fantastic to get something like this, that back and forth with this. Um, and what this also allows to do is these are all very clear explanations that get Picard to space, which is obviously part of the series. It's getting him investigating this. These don't have to be the real answers. No, they're true. just answers that the characters in the show can legitimately believe to cause motivation for the actions they take to begin with. In fact, I assume some of these things are just wrong. Um, oh, absolutely. But they make sense which means when the characters go to find out that they're wrong, it makes sense. And then when they find out that they were wrong and there's something new and maybe it's deeper or different, their reactions will make sense and their follow through will make sense. So it's a better way to do it than leaving us in the, in the dark for Star Trek is in a series about archetype caricature caricatures doing things and then you slowly find out that they're really deeper human beings. Star Trek is a series about giving you things to think about 
and then continuing to think about them. And that involves lots more dialogue and involves a little bit more exposition. So it's always nice when they show and don't tell. But, uh, and it involves a lot more like theory gaming. And so hopefully Picard takes full advantage of this and kind of drives the fan base nuts by just giving them things and answer questions and then answers and then maybe those answers aren't the right answers. I honestly, the, the thing that's going to, my big takeaway from this episode, I can tell already, is going to be, I love that we we are so programmed um, as humans and as viewers to distrust the Romulans. I love that they are working on this board cube in a allegedly very public interest way. You know, it's got a cute acronym for the, the name and, and oh, look, we're gathering from all species. And all you have to say is if any, if the Romulans were able to um, master the Borg technology that allows them to change defenses, just that would completely alter the balance of power in the, in the yeah, universe. Right? Nobody trusts the Romulans. So nobody trusts the Romulans. But I, here we're in this position of like, should we trust the Romulans? Maybe. I mean, they're, 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 it's the new Star Trek, but at the same time, no, of course. Can't trust the Romulans. Can't trust them. Which makes me think that, in fact, they are going to be heroes in this. Maybe they'll I be... I feel like it's a dodge. Yeah. This is hopefully. I get that he doesn't want to be responsible for their lives, but how do you... You're talking about resurrecting data. That's, that's really what this is about. Yeah. How do you not tell Riker and Troy, at a minimum, like, we have a chance to get well, him back? We know they show up in an episode right. I'm just, and so my guess is is that he intends to do that but he doesn't want them at ground one mission he wants to let them know that he's making this happen and then leave them wherever the hell they are to avoid getting them involved in any of this because in his mind he's going to die now remember he has a suspicion a, that he might die Yeah. so this is a last mission and so he's fine with this level of danger because if he dies, he dies, but he wouldn't be at all okay with bringing any of his like close personal friends. So he's going to find some people that are either aware of the danger and have their own reason for wanting to pursue it um, or not. I can see a Patrick's, I can see a Jean-Luc Picard not telling people about something that he's pretty sure will kill him. Um, oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. But, I, but you're right. They would all be 100% down. I hope that factors in as a, how dare you not tell us. Oh, be better. I never really cared for science fiction. I guess I just didn't get it. All right, so this episode was a lot of talking. There's a ton this of talking. There's a lot of talking, which isn't wrong in a Star Trek Picard thing. The next Gen was filled with talking. DS9 was, there's lots of talking in Star Trek. And what we don't want is like the first few se couple seasons of Voyager or um, Discovery where they solve a lot of problems with shooting. Um, there's a place for action in Star Trek, certainly John Wick style action, like hand to hand combat. Um, and though the stunt coordination has been terrible historically, like it's not like it's never been a part of it. But I feel like a couple of the talking scenes were a little long in this episode uh, like the same talking scene was going on too long absolutely well it was it was literally nothing but exposition followed by exposition followed by some of it was was interesting and and a lot of it progressed the plot mm -hmm. in significant ways yeah which is the best kind of exposition but at the same time there was literally no action in that episode there was no no tension in the episode it was just different pairs of people talking yeah sometimes three people talking then back to two people talking that but the information was was really cool of high value so yeah. it's a weird thing it doesn't quite have the cinematography of the first episode certainly um uh it doesn't quite have like the unified vision but yeah it just introduces more characters it gives you, I mean, the best part of the episode is Picard being like, heed my, what is it? 
Uh, you ignore me at your peril. You ignore me at your peril, right? Yeah, like that, that blows was you away in the season. And it really sets the tone for how all in he's going to become about this. Um, but it was a lot of setup for what needed to kind of be fleshed out to answer some of the questions we had in the first episode, as we mentioned, but also to sort of set up. It's like, all right, you got to get a squad together. It's time to A-team this shit out into space. Um, uh, and, and I think that they didn't, I won't know if this was like a kind of a necessary evil until uh, until um, the rest of the season comes out, right? Until I, I get a look at the whole of it and being like, yeah, they didn't, they really needed to move the plot there. So it was uh, it's like, there's better ways, but it, it's not as much of a sin. I'm just happy that they are not only answering questions, they're provide, providing very satisfactory answers to questions. One of the things I was going to bring up was uh, how can they make an assassination attempt or an abduction attempt at the, the, the twin on Earth and not know that they have a twin literally under their nose? Well, of course they know. Yeah. Okay, good. They were just going wasn't... after the one that they didn't have any kind of control over or good monitoring on first. I always love there's a there's a trope. It's it's true. It's historically true where spies will sleep with uh, people from enemy nations. I like that they, they go out of their way to express how much Romulans hate AI. And this guy has to sleep with an AI every night. Yeah, it, uh, like it's like, is there Romulan Viagra? Hmm. That is how he or is it just she cute enough? I, these are the inquiring minds want to know. It, it's a neat it's a it, it, it's a neat thing um i'm not a hundred percent sure so i'm deeply interested in the board cube reclamation the artifact reclamation i don't care about the romance part between the um twin and the romulan double agent uh, give me Borg interaction. That's what I want. And it's not because I'm so focused on Borg. I'm just obviously there's moves to be made here um, by the Romulans. Obviously there might be a left hand, right hand not necessarily knowing what each other are doing, right? The Romulans might have Romulan government main might be like, oh, we're going to do this. We're going to reclaim some of this technology. It's going to help us build our fleet and everything like that because there's so much resource here. Great. And then this super tall Shi'ar step up um, group, this original uh, group um, that hates AI and everything is like running side ops around the main thing. And I could see that or I could see this as a deeper Romulan plot or maybe out of a Romulan terrorist group plot because the Romulan Empire has been too weak for the last decade and a half. So do you think that the the Romulan guy the, the that's sleeping with her. Yeah. Is he betraying his Romulan empire or is he is he a bad guy that because my, my prediction is kind of that that what's ultimately going to be found out is that the entire Borg um, reclamation, for lack of a better word, it's mm. not a reclamation acquisition um, is going to be exposed as a massive Romulan plot and that's when she is going the twin is going to link up with Picard and they start on the larger adventure whatever that whether that's uh, uh them being chased through the galaxy or or them taking on the Romulans so yeah um so here's my thought here's my theory i feel like your instincts were correct um that they're going to use the Romulans as villains as kind of a fake. Obviously, that AI hating organization is like guts into these twins and trying to figure out what that. So I'm fine with them. I really think that they're going to play the Romulus government as actually, for the most part, not knowing what the hell is happening with that group and this whole AI thing because it's not what they're involved in. Right now they're involved in the Borg reclamation. 
And they must be public about it because they have so many different aliens working on it, including many. Well, they, uh, they have a cute acronym and safety briefings. Yeah, that is so, that, that is all the. the so hallmarks. I think they're studying it and then utilizing parts. And it's kind of an easy way to give the, like it's something that doesn't really have to be contested by the Federation. Um, all uh, right. So here, here's, yeah, a, here's so a simpler question. Who's behind the attack on Mars? The hacking of the of the. Oh, AI. that's a hundo percent. Um, I don't think it's the rocket. And that's a hundo percent. Uh, yet to be revealed, like oh, okay. that person's not even a player yet in the game. Okay. And for the audience, I was just curious um, if you. No, the, the AI was the hacked. The hack. No, the Romulans have no reason. That, so if the AI had just blown themselves up. I'd be like Romulans all day, every day. But I think that's a little too obvious. That's definitely a, a, like a, this is obviously probably the group that hates AI. So they make them do something bad to get them banned. And that, well, that is convenient. It's a little too convenient for the story. So that's a misdirect if they even lean toward that. Uh, I don't think that player has been revealed yet. And I think that that player will have a deep and significant connection with the original Star Trek Next Gen in the movies. I believe absolutely whoever's responsible for this is a character that anyone that's watched the whole series and the movies could piece together and figure out. They're doing a great job of pulling little little tidbits. Just out of enough. The, yeah. Can we talk about that guest visitor badge? The star <laughs> so that sideways badge. What a great cosplay. That is somebody get that up on Etsy right now. Yeah. Um what a great cosplay. Um uh, score is still good. They're still hitting those flute moments just right, which is of course Picard's instrument. Um, they're still that. They, um, they're still hitting those um, uh, undertones of the original villain themes in the background. They're not quite as heavy-handed in Episode Two as they were in Episode One, but they're still there. Um, and then they gave us more questions. Like I have more questions. How long has that organization infiltrated um, uh, Starfleet? might pieces of this be responsible for why Starfleet didn't uh, like just stood aside and when the Federation pulled back why Starfleet wasn't just like now nah, we're gonna roll in anyway which they have done before um when the Federation is like you can't do this um you know uh I am super excited to in addition to the deep questions which you're talking about i love all the subtle world building that's happening yeah. again by not there's there's enough exposition for six shows but the like like we have a romulan commodore inside of starfleet you yep. well that's really interesting uh um, well let's talk about we, i mean we joked about it we've got escalators in a building that has transporters outside of it but we've also seen moving physical vehicles which finally puts through the answer, how fucking expensive are transporters? Because we've never really had an answer to like where the complexity of that technology lives within the television series and movies. Comic books and novels probably have answered it. But, and so it's like, would everyone just have a teleporter in their home? It's like they're quietly answering dumb Star Trek questions right. as well by just fleshing out a world that we didn't understand because they never focused on it. So, and you're forgetting the when they teleport in from somewhere into into the first twins' apartment because they they just teleport into that that uh, space. I got so it. Picard had access to a teleporter somewhere. Yep. I'm I, that he could program. I in my head, Starfleet is so cheap that escalator has been there since before they had teleporter technology. And they just left it. And they just won't take it. Like it's only for visitors. Who cares? Okay a question for you before we wrap up this episode this episode of hard for hard <sighs> this episode of star trek picard a dying to expose your watch <laughs> series um uh all right we already know this season we've got a uh, a data we got a will riker we got a uh uh deanna troy um, we know this season there is no um, Michael Dorn as Worf, and there is no Geordi LaForge. Um, 
uh, at all. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's nowhere we we know there's no Guinan. We don't know there's no Beverly Crusher. Yeah, we don't know about Gates McFadden. We don't technically know about Will Wheaton, but we can guess because he's hosting the after show. Um, uh, I I am going to go deep with yeah. the. Um, we don't know any of those things. I I I think that um, there is enough enough depth of story and enough fore planning in in just just two. Uh, for planning is kind of redundant just planning in only two episodes we've already seen them go deep into the well in terms of we're setting this up we'll answer it later um it that level of thought makes me Think believe that they they're they could set up some misinformation absolutely you, you, all you have to do is sell an actor now you're not in it until you're in it um and, you know I, I would be i'll be disappointed if none of those people make uh, make it into make the first cameos. season, um, uh, if you had to pick someone that wasn't like main cast through this set for multiple seasons, kind of thing, who would you pick to see in this? That's a great question. Uh, honestly, this is going to sound totally lame, but they they got now that we know what the 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 plot is starting to form i would have absolutely said seven of nine she's gonna be in it but we know that she's there so that's that's kind of a of a cop we also know that hugh is going to show up in it at some point uh Uh, because it's board related and the actor is shown on set and toured around all the comic cons with him i uh you know what i'm gonna go back to uh tasha yar's ron ron baby it's a solid it's a solid thing it would really tie it into the weird lore. It's also in theme with cloning, kind of. Oh yeah, she she could have a ton to do with this. Um, uh, I would like to see. I think I would like to see Ensign Rowe as somebody that helps Picard. Do you now now uh, uh like a commander? Like, so no, she got rolled out of Starfleet. Like, well, she was under Picard's command, it was fine. But then the moment that she was no longer under his command, uh, she loses, uh, uh, she begins to degrade and sort of habits and everything. Oh. Maybe you fucked around in the Maquis for a while um, and then came out of it and everything. And it's an older woman now, you know, like she's, uh, she's I mean, she was much younger than Patrick Stewart, but she'd still be. Um, she'd still be easily in her mid fifties now as an actress and as a character. Um, uh, so Ensign Rowe, um, kind of like a Jack of all trades had to survive by her wits. I would love, I know she wouldn't be main cast, but I would love to see her somewhere. It's just a character that I'd love to revisit because she had such an impactful or she had such a regular thread of episodes for that one season. And then either they didn't bring the actress back or she had something else to do. Um, but yeah, Ensign Rowe, I think, is my next-gen character. I uh, Honestly, what I care about, and I don't know how doable this is from a, a logistics standpoint, I, wa- I just want to see a lot of characters, obscure characters, from even if they were in one episode, now having yeah. advanced in the ranks of Starfleet, and you know, ensigns are are our commanders or captains or at least lieutenants. Uh, I, I there's there's oh, so much fertile here ground. Here we go. For that. Here we go. I don't know what his rank would be, so I'm just gonna make it up right now. Commissioner Miles O'Brien. I oh. would love that. Where he went up through the oh, the the, yeah. the um not the service method, not the officer method. And so, you know, they always kept giving him like new titles, but he was never, he was always poor. He was never an officer. Yeah, like, so much the voice Starfleet voice. equivalent of a sergeant major. Yeah, yeah. And, and oh, so whatever they fantastic. would title him, I would love it that at Cole Meany is a beast of an actor uh, that was yeah. underused on Next Gen. They finally started using him on Deep Space Nine. Um, and I'd love to see him come back. 
Um, I'd also love pretty much anyone from any other Star Trek series. There's no reason to me that you couldn't bring in someone from DS9 or even Voyager if you really wanted to. Um, uh, I, I mean, they do. They bring in Seven. Um, so there, There's not... The, the truth is, I, I don't know. I'm going to catch a lot of flack for this. I don't think there's enough interesting characters from Voyager. I care more about seeing the the some of the DS9 crew like you, you were talking about Avery Brooks coming back that yeah. would be really interesting that'd be real fun who, who honestly who from Voyager I mean obviously Ensign Harry Kim right of course of course Tom Paris crazy now no that is the problem you know who I'd like to see from Voyager one character well actually there's two, two characters I'd like to see from Voyager first character is Tuvok that actor knocked him right out the oh, yeah. park and will and and in a sea of mediocre mediocre acting, he was killing it as Tuvok. Um, and then Kate Mulgrew is Catherine Janeway. Absolutely. I'm a hundred percent down. Yeah. She could easily be an admiral at this point. She she from inside Starfleet would be a great. I'm a help fucking Patrick or Patrick Stewart. I'm a help Captain Picard accomplish a goal because that's the kind of morality. That Janeway had to learn all those years. Um, yeah, there are so uh, many ways the, to tie that in. Those are the two. Uh, and then and of course, she's still acting. She's still very yeah, active. Uh, yeah, she's and she's great. Yeah. Um, of course, uh, Robert Picardo, the Doctor, um, would be easy to uh, plug in there. Um, he he I would be more like a fun cameo where yeah. he'd like pop up in something, um, and and you'd be like, ah, oh, it's the Doctor. But um, I liked a lot of his plots, even though they were directly typing data. Um, a lot of his plots were uh, fun. Um, and I felt like the actor, again, in that show, the strongest acting, uh, or some of the strongest acting, was being done by some of the most stoic characters. Yeah. He's, so, a, he's a phenomenal character actor. But yeah. I got nothing against that act. It, just the character's not interesting. The problem with Voyager was predominantly that nobody's interesting same 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 problem with enterprise what are you Just, talking about uh, okay okay I'm, I'm gonna give you a challenge okay. name 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 the crew of voyager Name the crew yeah like by name, name? Cast. Uh, no i i can't not not the actors just the, the, the yeah, yeah. no i you got captain i can Jane i can identify like i can describe them yeah you got captain not, janeway you got captain janeway you got uh you you got the the um oh the shit what was her name first her technically second man yep chicote uh, chicote thank yep. you um Tuvok, Seven, um, uh, who, who is it? Oh, Kim's the young, the, the young, he was young at the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I, I don't know, honestly. Tom Paris. Oh, God, I totally forgot about Paris. I literally forgot about Paris. Do you remember Bolana Taurus? Yes. Bolana Taurus. Eh. Then, of course, you got Neelix. Yeah, all right. And Neelix and would be an interesting cameo. Neelix would be a weird as fuck cameo. Um, and then, uh, and then, uh, oh, what's her name? The young woman that Seven replaced. Um, oh, this makes me sad. I almost had this whole crew. Um, no, it's just. Uh, and like, if we if we played that game with Enterprise, I'll just give up in advance. Like. <laughs> Hold on, There's, let me see if I can do Enterprise. Uh, you got Archer. You got Trip. Right. You got... God, I hated Trip. Uh, you got Just Archer and Trip. Trip. And for them to kill him off for absolutely no reason in the last episode. So weird. What? Oh, Trip dying? Yeah. yeah um, you got... Um, Super weird. Merryweather. Merryweather's yeah. one that people forget. But uh, if you check out my banner on personal Facebook of of of, of all the uh, black actors from Star Trek's up through Enterprise and a little secret smiler Lando in the corner. There was the, um, the Vulcan gal. Uh, uh, what was her name? Uh, this should not be this hard. She was terrible in like the first 
She got better. She did. The, she did. By the by the time the series awful. was done. Uh, but she she definitely struggled in the first couple seasons. What was and, her name? Uh, Tuval? No, that's no, no, no that's that's um that was her name. Uh, and then then yeah, there's then there's the British guy that's like the security officer. Oh yeah. He's um, also he is a hundred percent forgettable. Um the least intimidating and he was like supposed to be ex special forces. Yeah, no. Nope. Uh, no. Who else? Who else? Uh, you have their doctor, Doctor Flox, who's a lot more memorable. Right. As most doctors are usually pretty entertaining. Uh, yeah. Um, they're at least well cast. Um, and then uh, 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 you have communications officer. Um, I can't remember her name. Um. Uh, yeah, yeah. So Enterprise definitely even, just it's terrible. Even more, color, terrible even more of a struggle than Voyager. Uh, I still recommend the last two seasons of Enterprise. They're sure. fantastic Star Trek, but it takes two whole seasons of pure schlock. The the best part is you can skip the first two seasons and you'll miss nothing. No, there is no lasting evolution. You gotta watch it. No, no. That's what we're gonna do after the card is over. We're just gonna watch <laughs> hate Enterprise. watch Enterprise. Just the first two seasons. We're not even going to give you the reward of the Zindi Wars or anything. Um, I'm in. That's... Uh, uh, anyway. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, uh, episode two of Picard. A little talky, a little slower. A little bit more, like, ex super exposition heavy, honestly. Uh, but it was hopefully to serve a purpose. So, we're going to pick it up to pay, pick up the pace and have a better balance next episode. Um, I, I, I'm going to go on record as saying it's the big B word and that that episode was all about budget. Maybe. Because that choreographing the fights, the hand to hand in that first episode's expensive. They uh, the the shootout at the beginning or the, the, the murder spree yeah. at the oh, beginning yeah. was yeah. kind of expensive. expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so they maybe spent this a lot on those, nice, that board prop. Yeah. Maybe this was just a nice. um Nice uh, budget down episode. But either way, um, uh, what do you think of the episode? Did you like it? Did you think it was strong? Did you think all the extra exposition made it feel a little bit more like Star Trek? Not to say that Star Trek is boring, but it can get hella boring. Anyway. Uh, tell keep, us what you think in the yeah, comments. Yeah, tell us what you think in the comments. Like and subscribe. Dying of exposure for this and other Star Trek series like Highly Illogical about the animated Star Trek uh, original season, the fourth year of the five-year mission, um, as well as when we begin discussing uh, season three of Discovery when it comes out after Picard. Nice. Uh, uh, so come to Dying of Exposure for all of your uh, Star Trek video needs. Uh, once again, my name is Steve. I'm Greg. And uh, we are dying to see the next episode of Star Trek Picard. So we'll see you for the next part for Picard. God! Damn it!